Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Today, we have one more set of great revenge stories. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. And our first story. My demotion included a pay raise and three months paid vacation as revenge. A little background. At a finance company I was once at in Miami, I was in upper management for a long time, and it was recently sold. Now, I'd been at the company since almost the start, and I'd created my department that I managed from nothing and ran it smoothly for years as the company grew over time. One of the other upper managers in the loans department actually became the CEO of the company after the sale. No big deal. We were friends, so I thought it would work out great. Boy, was I wrong. What ended up happening is he started firing or demoting most of the upper and middle management, taking away perks and decreasing pay. I was demoted, but I had enough knowledge and connections in the company to know this ahead of time. I also knew they brought in a guy to replace me, paid half as much, no finance background, and I also knew where they were going to move me in the company, to a much, much lower position. The CEO became very greedy and just seemed to hate everyone at this point. That's when I got a plan that would benefit me nicely on my way out on my own terms, all while my greedy CEO thought he was demoting me. Since I knew all this, I was able to get a new job lined up, but I had a lot of vacation time left, so I wanted to take advantage of it. Since they had no idea I was planning on leaving, I submitted a request for a three-month vacation in Europe. Now, this vacation was three months out from now, so it was approved. They soon started having me train this new guy to assist in my department, which I knew exactly what they were doing at this time. I also knew he was in no way able to run the department, so I just trained him anyway. I could have said something about him not being qualified, but I'm sure my jerk of a CEO knew what he was doing, right? Well, this new guy wasn't able to grasp or really understand what I did. Performance of my department slipped dramatically, as my department was a giant mess with this guy trying to run it and me basically taking a backseat for laughs. Fast forward about two months later, one month until my vacation. Next, they moved me into a new department. I hated it, but I knew if I played dumb and said I needed training, even though I knew what to do, I would get trained and have to do little actual work. That meant shadowing another guy all day and really not doing much work myself at all. All the while, the guy who took my old job was dropping the ball like crazy, and they had me go back in his department to help out once in a while. Which, when they had me go back to my old department, I again played dumb and said that since the new guy was running it, I would just follow his lead which was a huge train wreck, and he had a huge backlog of work. Then I went on my vacation. They were in no way prepared for me to leave, and I simply turned off my phone for three months. Then I returned from my three-month paid vacation. My department is in flames. The new guy's almost ready to get fired, so greedy CEO calls me into his office and asks me why I didn't train him enough. At this point, my plan was complete, or so I thought. I simply said, I quit. This is my two weeks and walked out with a smile on my face. I still showed up for work the next day for my last two weeks, but the greedy CEO says I can just go. No problem. I leave and head home. However, since my department is still in flames and at this point very difficult to fix and the backlog of work is huge, the CEO calls me and asks me to help train the new guy again for triple my hourly pay since they now know no one else can handle this and they have limited time. Wow. Nice pay boost for a few days. Great. So I stop in the next day and do absolutely nothing. However, three days later, CEO says I can just go again and they don't need me. The next day I get a call and they really need my help and offer me even more pay to come back in for my last few days and help again. Hey, money's money. Again, I stop in the next day and do absolutely nothing until my two weeks are up, all the while getting a huge pay increase for my last two weeks. I moved on to the new job I'd lined up for double the pay and a better position, all while my old company seems to be going under. And our next story. Try and force workers into dangerous and life-threatening situations. This will backfire you on ways you couldn't imagine. This is the story about how I resigned from my warehouse job once and for all. The company I used to work for implemented a new way of paying management commissions and bonuses. It was a money-saved, money-paid type thing. Every little thing had a bonus attached to it. This month you saved on stationery, here's 100 bucks. Didn't spend any money to repair the store in any way, 
Here's 500 bucks. Normally, this wouldn't affect us, but there were a few categories that were outright dangerous and unfortunately had the biggest bonuses attached to them. It started with the manager and area manager wanting us to change light panelings in the store. There were a few problems with this. The lights were so old that the wiring was faulty and unpredictable. The way the lights were rigged would require you to have training as an electrician to remove the panels and replace the bulbs. Management was hoping that we would undertake the work, saving costs on hiring a professional electrician and thus receiving a hefty bonus. I outright refused, but a few of my offsiders were roped into it. After one particular incident of a worker receiving a mild shock, we all banded together and said, no effing way. A week later, we were emailed a link to a new online training course. The main theme? Warehouse employees were to undertake various maintenance tasks. And the main one? Changing lights, light panels, etc. If we didn't complete this training, then we would be unsuitable employees not meeting our hiring requirements and could possibly be terminated. I set about taking screenshots of everything, including the mandatory tests. It became evident very quickly that I was one of the only employees who'd refused to complete the training and was confronted by the area manager, who said I had a week to complete the training or I'd be written up with an official warning, and because of the severity of the warning, I could face disciplinary action and possible immediate termination. Now, what the management didn't count on was anyone sharing this information with outsiders. I put together a nice packet with all the new tests and training that would force warehouse employees to do dangerous tasks, but also copies of the new management bonus structure where it explicitly had categories that detailed if employees could do in-store repairs and the company saved money, they'd receive a hefty bonus. There was even an award for most money saved. I also made sure to include the copious amount of emails and texts showing that management was violating a lot of health and safety guidelines especially with the lack of warehouse staff to safely unload and load trucks and shipping containers. And one of the worst things I found was around page 36 of our contracts, which stated we weren't officially covered to unload transfers and trucks, that the company would hire professional contractors to unload, and it was up to us to take over once they were safely unloaded. Why? Because the company didn't want to cover us medically if we injured ourselves unloading. An oversight on all of our behalves, but shocking nevertheless. I checked in with my best friend, a lawyer, who helped me navigate any non-disclosure issues and who pointed me in the right direction with sending off this information. Once I had sent everything off, everything went back to normal for a while. Management kept pressuring me into signing off on undertaking dangerous tasks to make their bonuses, and I refused. It all came to a head when the area manager essentially said, you don't sign off on this next shift, I'll fire you on the spot. No matter how much I pleaded my case, the AM tried to spin it as a new company wife initiative and that we should take pride in our workplace. What a load of crap. I struggled with this a lot and didn't know what to expect when I got off the bus and made my way to the store the next morning. When I walked in ready for my next shift, the store was essentially deserted. I opened the warehouse, checked the transfer sheets, then grabbed my water bottle and headed into the store to fill it up. As I was standing there by the water filter, the customer service manager came downstairs with this cheeky smile on his face. Apparently, the manager was under close review and was currently in mediation having to answer for all the bullcrap corners she'd cut to make her bonuses. The best bit? The area manager and general manager were both fired. Apparently, they were given the choice to resign without any payouts or benefits, or the shareholders and CEO of the company would begin an investigation into these practices. I couldn't believe it. A few hours later, the CEO and CFO arrived and tried to offer me a bonus for speaking up, a formal apology, and a raise if I was to drop the case. I just grabbed my bag and resigned right there on the spot. No way was I dropping anything. I walked out of there with a sense of satisfaction knowing that they'd be investigated and hopefully taken to task on what they'd tried to force us to do. From what I saw online and on the company's website, it took a long time for the company to recover. Even to this day, you can see the company has been bought, changed hands over and over. Millions lost, bad publicity, public trust and employees' trust gone, all to save a few bucks and reward greedy management. And our last story. I kept getting collection calls for someone else. Wouldn't stop until I left messages for their CEO and CFO at home. 
I lived in a corporate relocation apartment for three months while relocating for a job. I started getting collection calls for the previous occupant almost immediately. They called multiple times a day. It would wake up my kids during naps, after bedtime, weekends, you name it. I started by politely letting them know I wasn't the person they were looking for. Nicely, rudely, begging, you name it. They were incredibly rude and refused to tell me their names, name of their supervisor, etc. I was at my wit's end. After one particularly nasty encounter, I snapped. I started Googling, pre-Google equivalent, their corporate officers, etc. I found that the CEO and CFO had very unusual names and quickly discovered they had publicly listed phone numbers. Yes, it was not a huge bank, and this was early 2000s before people were exclusively using cell phones. This was approximately 8 p.m. on a Sunday night. I called each number explaining that since I kept receiving collection calls from their company in spite of not being the person that they sought, every time they called me, I would call them, left my phone number and name, and hung up. Not even 10 minutes later, I get a call from their IT department asking for all the pertinent info, who the customer was, my name, how to spell it. I never got a call from them again. And I hope someone got fired. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.